Колеги, дякую, що дочекали. Дякую. I'll start with the uh, recruitment of the armed forces to Ukraine. As you know, uh, we uh, do that as, uh, based on the mixed system. We are talking about the conscripts in the uh, contract base, uh, mobilized in the active forces. According to the presidential decrees, um, uh, since November 1st this year, we started the conscription campaign. In subject to the conscription are 11,600 persons. Today we already can uh, include 7,000 plus, which is actually 50% of now 6% of the uh, number of the personnel according to our plan, and um, we, uh, which actually is a, a very good indicator. We are going to do our conscription or the um, recruitment. Uh, successfully. We are going to start this year training all the active forces uh, personnel uh, for, to, to, to train according to their specialization and uh, later they are going to be a uh, part of the mobilization reserve. Also, uh, you are talking about compensation uh, to the amount of two minimum salaries which is 2,756 grivna. May I remind you that the uh, active service um, uh, servicemen uh, will not be involved in the ATO operations. As for the recruitment uh, of the contract-based uh, personnel today, starting from the beginning of the 2015, uh, we have uh, 14,521 servicemen based on the contract. Out of that number, 10,223 um, are the civil in use, uh, 622 active forces, and 3,076 persons, uh, the mobilized force. If we compare this figure, those figures, with the recruitment based on the contracts. In 2014, this figure was 11,985 servicemen. We still have three months to go, and I'm sure that we actually will manage to recruit the, the contract-based personnel. And the results of the last two months actually gives us the grounds to talk about the very positive um, result. And uh, uh, a painful uh, topic uh, regarding the losses or casualties in the armed forces of Ukraine. All the whole period of the armed forces of Ukraine being involved in the ATO operation, especially of late, the mass media carried the news and the internet uh, community actually carried some of the information and the management of the general staff and the Minister of Defense actually tried to um, to, to, to give the, the, the lower figures regarding this schedule. They may I report to you that the, uh, the, 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 the let's say, the counting of the um, uh, personnel is a very serious thing. Uh, each serviceman is in our books and uh, and they should strike a no off of any serviceman from that record or um, no registration uh, is fraught with some kind of administrative or even criminal liability and responsibility. But this, this is not the most important thing. But uh, we are talking about the responsibility before those servicemen, their families and the community and the society. That's why we cannot give you untrue uh, information regarding the casualties. And recently we heard the information that allegedly in five brigades, and you remember we, we declared that um, we, we reported three casualties, but in fact they said they allegedly we had the 15 casualties, which is untrue and can tell you about that. Today the casualties in the armed forces of Ukraine over the whole period of the ATO 
including the annexation of Crimea, and uh, amount to the combat casualties. 1,842 servicemen, 831 persons in non-combat casualties, wounded uh, persons, 8,519 uh, of that, combat uh, ca uh, wounded is slighter than that. Uh, uh, in compliance with the effective legislation, the families of the eight, uh, 1,803 um, uh, families received the, the special allowances. 27 persons, uh, uh, I mean, we, we already issued the necessary documents. 12 of them were cancelled, uh, this uh, right on the uh, official basis. Yeah. Again, if you're talking about 3,146 those who were wounded, uh, 106 um, uh, packages of documents uh, were submitted for the verification. We continue to take care of 2,988. As for uh, given the status of the participants in the combat activities as of now, as of today, the right eligible for that status are uh, 1,096,936. right. In, on a regular basis, we are working uh, along those lines, and uh, every week we have the meetings of the Commission to render the status of the participants in the combat actions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, General. Um, are there any questions? And uh, please introduce yourselves. One plus one, General Evgeny Garkov. My question is as to... Uh, this uh, early wave of mobilization, uh, uh, there's a rumor that from 2016 there will be another wave uh, of mobilization. Uh, please provide comment as if uh, men uh, who are younger than 45 will be prohibited to leave Ukraine. Maybe there's other signals as to men who cannot, maybe that's uh, like a signal from, how do they say it? Звідти йде. Ніяких таких і речей не може виникнути. Це по-перше. Щодо мобілізації. Ви розумієте, зараз приходить... As regards mobilization, as you can understand, that we are approaching the end of the service of the fourth wave of mobilization during the third. A wave of mobilization, we uh, actually summoned uh, 4,000 plus uh, servicemen. They need to be uh, to the rotation. We take care of, uh, of uh, men in use in the contract based servicemen and we have achieved some of the results. Uh, and also now we are introducing amendments to the law on uh, service and reserve. There will be a service and reserve. These are who sign contract. People will sign such contracts. <laughs> We're sure that there will be more people who want to serve. And uh, this is basically the decision of the president, and I believe We shouldn't um, reduce our activities uh, on training people. We need to have uh, units which could react to the challenges which uh, could uh, come from the so-called DPR, LNR, and Russian Federation from different directions. I believe that the decision will be made. <clears throat> and it will be very positive for supporting our 
armed forces at a very good level as to mobilization, next wave of mobilization. We're calculating, we're calculating. And the forecast is, uh, it will not be 40,000, but less. When should we expect to hear the figures? February, pro probably February. And it will be about the same categories of people, same age as previous uh, recruitments. I can tell you openly, all previous recruitments in accordance to the resolutions will be, all these people will be come part of reserve. Особовий склад, який був звільнений під час демобілізації попередніх черг. Actually, we are talking about the major, the major guys who were separated from the army before. What, what, what are the plans to recruit? How many we are going to recruit for the next year? You, you managed, you mentioned thirteen thousand for the whole year. Yes, thirteen thousand. 521 persons uh, on the contract basis. So what uh, number of the personnel you plan to, to, go, to put on the contract next year? The more, the better. We plan uh, to reach um, uh, the figure between 18 and 20,000. Uh, should we have, um, if you increase the motivation, uh, and this motivation will uh, actually meet the requirements of today. What about the compensation? You know, you know, as President of Ukraine mentioned, we are going to increase the uh, compensation given to the uh, contract-based uh, servicemen to the tune of uh, six and a half, seven thousand per month. Well, there isn't just... Uh, this is information which is not uh, very accurate from different sources, but the guys say that those who are on the front line, they bring the contract which is signed by them. They basically force people to switch to contract. What is this information about? I know the facts and uh, the person told me that the contract was brought and they say uh, just sign, no one can force to sign. If there are such facts, uh, then give me the names, give me these uh, military units and we will look uh, attentively at each one of the facts. Thank you. Any other questions, clarifications? Once you have no more questions and clarifications, thank you. And very important piece of news.